So it's today is the practical wireless discussion. It'd have been a bit early, but that Midland 2001 we were doing was on the bench for three days. Um, I've got an organ video to get out. We'll try to do those every Friday, but uh, it's Saturday. I will just have to finish that off. Doing that every week. Uh, not much to show this week, but I've still put in uh, 28 hours. So I found some practical wirelesses when I was 10 years old that was in 1972 in Rotherham on a building site somebody dumped them in the trenches which had been dug out for the foundations and for some houses and there were some practical wireless magazines or some radio and electronic constructor magazines and I hadn't been that enthusiastic about reading and then suddenly these appeared and I jolly well had to brush up my reading skills <laughs> um, and there's abbreviations which are a stumbling block extal for crystal words like and don the headphones what does don mean there was the river don you know these are not slang these are slang terms that aren't necessarily in dictionaries and not easy for a 10 year old so I thought well this is a good magazine and my mother said well his, uh, her father my grandfather used to take it before the war so she was aware of the magazine she said we'll have a look at the news agents um, when we're going to town and see if it's still available and so it was about Ooh, let's have a think. It would be about April 1974. And the next available issue, it was, it had gone off the shelf. And he said, well, it, we do take it, and it will be coming in shortly. So uh, next time we went into town, it had come. I used to get six pence pocket money. That's six old pence, two and a half pence. So 25 pence was you know, 10 weeks pocket money. So I certainly had to do some extra things. I uh, start doing a paper round to try and fund things like this. So, this was the first issue I bought. Mind you, my mother made me throw away the ones I'd found in the trench because she says they'll be out of date. Of course, I've got every issue right back to 1932, which is what the discussion is going to be. So that's the first issue I bought. There's the Mini Pop. ZM414 and MFC 4000 V based radio I built I've built three times let's build another one there you are this is this came the other day this is today's copy of practical wireless and by comparison to the 60s and 70s and even the early 80s uh, where's the projects you know and what there is tends to be kit reviews or oversimplified things so not not how it used to be but I still take it but here's what this video is about issue number one so I scanned this it is also available on that um, American website which I'll put a link to but um, this is an amalgamation of my scan and his scan I've done the best of both. I don't know whether he's got it, but we've got the blueprint. I did scan this A3, but my A3 printer's in store, so I've printed it out A4. So for many years, um, certainly before the war and then after the war for a period, they did blueprints. They ended up not being blue, um, which is better for clarity. But there's your first blueprint, September the 24th, 1932, for the Long Range Express. So there we are. We have the blueprint. Um, bloke smoking his pipe. Threepence old money. And some of the advertisements are, are about as far fetched as 
internet advertisements are today. Take this pill, live forever, and weigh only seven stone six. <laughs> it says here it's 18 and a half stone. Bulging is still going. Wow. So, round the world of wireless, wireless was a the uh, kind of uh, discussion thing. F.J. F. Cam was the editor until he died in the 50s. Round the world of wireless. Controlling the volume. We've got to make sure you've got your jacket and tie on to work on your radio. An experimenter's baseboard. Radio wrinkles. These were hints and tips to uh, for, for um, little dodgers. And you've got to live in a detached property, and uh, obviously to to be enjoying radio. <laughs> He's still got his jacket on. He's got his jacket on. The Selectune Colt Transformer. All the this time they're all encapsulated in Bakelite with terminals. Cossa. Varley. Tested on our rail. It's their own scratchy corner test. Region tone. I think they got absorbed, absorbed into ITT. This is a, a good one. Radio fads and fallacies. That, we're full of that, aren't we? Adding snake oil and uh, it'll make things better. The photoelectric cell and how that works. And of course, cinema was a big thing then. Colvin. What's distortion? Got to have one of those old fashioned collars there with your tie. Eddie Swan. I granic. Some of the organs we attend, and certainly when I was doing my apprenticeship, the blower was I granic. Uh, using a pen toad for the audio output. Page of congratulations to various people who were, must have been pretty famous at the time um, I'll tell you who I was always impressed with is he on here the one who did those uh, stentorian speakers uh, Whiteley Electrical page 53 they got swallowed up by some big UK firm, I've forgotten even who it was, and uh, you know, kind of government military contracts and all that. And next thing, the factory had gone in, in Mansfield. But uh, I always thought a lot of the WB loudspeakers. My favourite circuit, and why? Building this long range Express 3 project, which the blueprint was for. The why and the wherefore. A good earth. What's he done? So you dig a hole and you put either spent coke out of your stove down or broken house bricks you put your biscuit tin and then multi-stranded uh, wire t uh, to the soldered to the tin box so there you are that would still happen doing your long wire aerial Do you understand your loudspeaker? Of course, they were mains energised, a lot of them at the time. So, they weren't, didn't all have permanent magnets. So, we're looking at a balanced armature speaker, which used a reed uh, before they were like they are today.
TCC condensers, which was the word for capacitors, and the motor industry still says, oh, your condenser's gone. Not that they've had them for a bit, but certainly some of the cars I've had have had the capacitor in the um, ignition, and uh, it's known as a condenser. It still seems to be. Doesn't he look an absolute burk? <laughs> he hasn't even got a scratchy teak corner t-shirt on. Bellingly. How to place your components. So you on a wooden, what they called a breadboard, which physically would be a breadboard a wooden board and the parts were screwed down with thick rigid uninsulated wire usually where I went on to make coils for donkeys years I don't think they folded till the 70s I think clicks are still going aren't they advertising another Nunes publication latest components 660 valves do not die suddenly. Well, 660 appears to have done. And if you get the Titbits um, newspaper, magazine, whatever it was, there's £4,625 in cash prizes offered. Celestian. Tannoy. Eagle Engineering company offering cabinets to put your chassis in replies to queries and inquiries now they'd previously been doing um, Practical Wireless Supplement in Hobbies magazine so this may be the first issue of Practical Wireless but the editorial staff were clearly involved some months prior to that in the Hobbies magazine so it's a bit like Citizens Band Radio magazine um, it was a breakaway from Hobby Electronics, um, which itself was a sister magazine to Electronics Today International. So they kind of had a few pages on Citizens Band Radio, um, 1979-ish. Then it diversified into the Citizens Band magazine on, as a standalone title. So here we are with Practical Wireless Data Sheet number one. So it's a little tiny cutout, not like those later ones I was showing you in Radar and Electronics Constructor. So what's this one on? Do you know what? I'm going to have to put the other glasses on. It's so small. You're going to have a better view on the... I can't see the monitor from here. Well, if it was CRT I could, but it's not. Uh, the sizes marked with asterisk to those chiefly used in wires construction. The tap drills and clearing drills may be obtained in sizes 1 through to 60. Number 1 being 0.228 inch diameter. Number 60.04. Beyond number 1 drill size from A to Z may be obtained. So we're talking about um, number drills to the diameter to the tap drill to the clearing drill. So there you go, we could scan every one of these and build that up into a wonderful chart of data. And we've got this here. Let's just see if I can move it across and keep it in the frame. I wish to make a frame aerial and should be glad to know the relation between the size of the frame and the number of turns, etc. Any details relating to this sort of aerial would be welcome. So Length of square frame, 8 feet. Number of turns, 3. Space between them, half an inch. Induction, 98 micro Henry's. So you've got this information which is still relevant today. This is before ferrite rod aerials where everybody had to have a long wire aerial. But if you couldn't do a long wire aerial, you had to have a frame aerial, which would be a wooden square of timber with wire and a bit of a cobweb round it. Let's go back to our normal position. 
and then out a bit more. Kassogs received Bulgin, Colvin, Ediswan, TCC, Clicks. The Bennett College Sheffield was a correspondence college and Mr. Bennett, don't know what, let me be your father. And he'd offer these correspondence courses and they, they, li they lived and they had an enormous posh hall in the outskirts of Sheffield. And there's a little tiny illustration there. I don't know whether the, it's, it's not come out well on the scan. So just see whether we can go into that. But really, really posh building. It's still there. I think it's a private school or a nursing home or something. Well, my uncle, who to, who's Toyota Corolla R Edge, which is now about 24, 25 years old, that I received in his will, <laughs> along with the funds for that chapel we've had built, which was, is, you know, he, he left money specifically for certain projects. Um, and uh, the chapel we've had built, not the organ going in it, but the chapel we've had built, is one of those projects. Though so it's gone well over budget and left me in a bit of a financial situation. But anyway, that aside, I'm very pleased to have had that. Um, and he... Uh, he worked for the um, Sheffield Town Hall all his life uh, in um, in planning and he never got higher than the number two position and you know I always think a lot of him whoops wrong way because he wasn't a yes man he never got the top position because he told people in the council no not yes Mr Smithings no Mr no none of that none of this three bags full he said no and I think a lot to him for saying no on occasions when he thought things were wrong. Uh, we could we could demolish this um, medieval church and put a petrol station on the site. No. Never got the number one position. Well, he did, uh, as a bit of a, uh, another income, he did marking of some of the papers for the Bennett College. And my uncle had a degree in languages, which he took at... Um, got a master's degree in languages at Cambridge University and he was at Jesus College and he started that I think uh, just before the war and then he finished the course just after the war and I probably said before he trained this is here's the complex bit he trained with the RAF in Arizona with the Canadian Air Force how complicated is that and he was on his final test in the air when they got the radio message that the war had ended and to bring the plane down. So he just got his wings and the examiner said to him, well, Mr. Shiby, do you want to take the plane up on your own? And he says, no, I can't be bothered. So there we are. <laughs> so that's why he survived World War Two. So... And I've got I, I photocopied his log books and things, you know, because uh, my sister's um, one of my sister's children uh, took an interest in having that kind of thing, so that was fine. Is this a rival magazine? No, it's another news title. And then finally, Graham Farish. Didn't they do models, or do they still do models? Don't worry putting his arm round his son or some other lad. <laughs> Your set's all right. All these little troubles are due to a faulty earth. You've made the set carefully, but neglected the vital point, the only direct connection to the station, the earth. Take my advice. Fit a filt today. The results will astonish you. Is your own set giving you the best? You don't know its possibilities until you try a filt. Spend half a crown on filt. 
and give your set a chance, says Graham Farish. So it was this metal thing with a terminal on it, which had some kind of chemical in it. He put it in the ground, and as it rotted away, it did this allegedly chemical tree into the ground. I dread to think what the chemical was. No doubt it would be banned today, and it probably didn't work anyway. But um, he has, he's wearing a bow tie, so obviously everything's all right. And <laughs> half a crown, 12 and a half pence in current money. But at a time when you probably earn three quid a week on a good day with the wind behind it, uh, that would be a considerable sum. So there we are, a little look at Practical Wireless, Volume 1, Number 1, September the 24th, 1932. Hope that's been enjoyable. Thank you for watching.